Welcome to this video. I'm Steve Bartlett and I'm a technical marketing engineer with HPE Aruba Networking. And this video is centered around the use cases in the data center with the HPE Aruba CX10,000 switch, which is natively DPU enabled to distribute intelligence to the data center network edge. The CX10,000 is complemented by the CX140, which builds on the foundation of the CX10,000 series, elevating the network even to new heights by doubling the performance at scale. For this video though, the focus is on the some of the most common CX10,000 use cases and where they add real value in the data center. Let's take a look at an overview of the distributed network services switch, DSS as we call it. This is the picture of the CX10,000, uh, which runs the industry leading HP Aruba AOS CX software operating system providing 3.6 terabits of switching capacity, 48 ports of 10 stroke 25 gig ethernet with six times 100 gig interfaces. A very high performing switch indeed, but that's not it. Integrated within this switch is 800 gig of stateful service performance. Now with that, you get a layer for stateful firewall. Embedded DDoS, uh, distributed denial of service protection, that is with every switch. Firewall logging and IP fix telemetry are all native as well to this switch. And we've also got IPsec encryption that you can leverage at the very edge of the network to a very scalable higher performance and NAT. And as I would explain, in the up and coming use cases, you will see it is a great fit for the modern data center. So let's take a look at the first use case. So this is with a spinal leaf fabric supporting layer two, layer three VXLAN. In this illustration, I've just got two spines, but it will scale out to more spines just for illustration purposes. And we've got six ten thousand in VSX switch pairs at the top of rack. And also we've got a VS VSX uh, 610,000 switch pair on the border leaf and obviously connecting to our top of rack leaves, we have our virtualization server layer connecting down into our top of rack. Now, what does this mean? We've got the ability to apply a firewall policy at the top of rack. Now, the impact of this is that we can apply a policy to every flow leaving the top of rack switch going into the fabric or even being switched locally. So we, in this example, we've got a we've got a flow leaving our top of rack switch and we can apply an egress policy. That's flow, that's effectively a policy for traffic leaving the host. And when it arrives at its destination top of rack switch pair, we can then apply an ingress policy and we can do this for every flow from the source and destination prior to and from it entering the fabric. And here we've got the same example, leaving this top of rack switch pair going to the border leaf. And of course we can apply the same concept for traffic leaving the border leaf. We can apply a policy and also a policy coming into our border leaf. So to take that concept of a single fabric, we can extend it to a multi-fabric. So in this example here, I've got three sites interconnected each site uh, between the fabrics by the border leaves. And we've got site one, site two, and site three. And what it means is that we can apply a policy to every flow within the fabric and to externally to another fabric. So that would be an egress policy on the egress flow prior to VXLAN encapsulation as it enters the fabric. And then we have an ingress policy at this destination that we can apply post VXLAN decapsulation on the destination VTAP. So let's take a look at this as an example. So the first flow is within, within a fabric. So on the flow, just like the, the previous example on the previous slide, as the flow is 
prior to it being encapsulated in bit with the VxLAN header, we can apply an egress policy on the outbound traffic. It gets encapsulated with the VxLAN header, goes across the fabric to the top of rack right destination, and there it's decapsulated, the VxLAN header stripped off, and we can apply an ingress policy. Likewise, we can take a flow between our fabric. So here we've got the same concept uh, prior to that flow entering the fabric and getting encapsulated with the VxLAN header, we can apply an egress policy on the flow outbound into the fabric. It gets encapsulated with the VxLAN header, traverses across our fabric. So it's going to go through multiple VxLAN tunnels to get to its destination. And at the target destination, when the VxLAN header is decapsulated, we can then apply an ingress policy on that flow prior to it reaching its target host. And the same again, we can do the, effectively the same again with the same concept from this site three going to the border leaf. So egress policy, VxLAN fabric, decapsulation, ingress policy, and the flow then goes to its destination host. So policy enforcement on every flow within a fabric and between fabrics, a wonderful way to secure our environment in a multi-fabric uh, architecture. And of course, we still get these options, of course, to uh, apply seamless insertion. We've got the block threading visibility with uh, telemetry and DDoS protection on every CX10K switch. So what about securing the flows between VMs within the virtual networking layer? A very important topic, and we have a very simple solution and an effective one, which involves PVLAN. So first of all, why microsegmentation in the first place? So first of all, it does improve security. So it blocks that lateral movement of threats within the virtual layer by our isolating workloads. And of course, with the CX10,000 and the stateful firewall, that enhances that model. So we get granular access control. So effectively enforcing the least pr privileged policies, should we wish. This is a significant factor in enforcing a zero trust policy all the way into the hypervisor for applications and workloads. And the threat containment, always very important. Blast radius is reduced. And of course, this is going to be essential for regulatory compliance. So with the firewall inspection on the CX10 Thay, we get 10K, we get a granular access control with visibility of flows impacting sensitive workloads. So this will obviously um, assist in cyber threats and effectively it's very easy to configure and manage using PVLANs. So if we take this example here, we've got isolated VLAN host one, isolated VLAN um, host two. Normally they would be, uh, be able to communicate between each other if they were connected to a virtual switch, but we put these on these isolated VLANs and then their communication path must go through to the top of rack switch where we can put the firewall policy on to manage that flow between the two hosts. And effectively, we get that micro segmentation between our workloads this way. So to expand on this theme, we've got micro segmentation with other hypervisors. So just to recap on the solution itself, we've got isolated VLANs, PVLANs in our virtual environment. We drop our hosts into those isolated private VLANs. They are then connecting to a primary VLAN on the top of rack switch, which is then redirected to our firewall, um, stateful firewall engine, where we can apply a policy. And with this, we get that tromboning of traffic and a stateful firewall policy between our hosts. So we've got support for vSphere and Hyper-V where we can apply that granular policy between micro-segmented hosts in the virtual layer. We've also got the same or the same capability, but in a different way with the um, 
integration with VME, uh, the, the HPE virtualized uh, hypervisor solution and the CX10000, it's actually using MacTap to force traffic down into the top of rack switch, but still effectively the same outcome. We've got micro segmentation between the two hosts. And the last one is on bare metal servers. Now bare metal servers, you've got really two options really. You can have the, um, the bare metal servers connecting to a standard VLAN port on the same VLAN on two different ports and just applying a firewall policy to permit or deny the traffic between those two bare metal servers. But you may want to block broadcast and multicast traffic because that still will get through. It will just stop the unicast traffic doing it this way. So if you actually want to prevent the uh, multicast and the broadcast traffic to go through, then you can use optional PV lands to support that. So moving gears now, where we are looking at encrypting traffic between a central site and a remote site. In this example, I've got two data centers connecting together. And what we're doing is effectively encrypting traffic across the wide area network between our two sites. And effectively, we've got traffic profiles coming from our border leaf going across uh, sorry, from our leaf to our border leaf across our VXLAN fabric, and then it's encrypted to go across into our um, target site where it be decrypted and then forwarded onto its destination host across the VXLAN fabric. Now, there may be lots of different reasons why we'd like to do this. It could be live backup replication, disaster recovery data, healthcare records, PCR related data or confidential business data, of course, that just needs to be covered and encrypted as part of compliance. So our preferred option is to use BGP over IPsec tunnels. This is for dynamic routing updates and getting mesh tunnel connectivity for resilience, but we do have other options for it. So the bandwidth throughput is amazing. So we've got up to 540 gigabits per second per distributed service switch, supporting up to a max of 1000 IPsec tunnels. It's a very, very scalable solution uh, with very high throughput. And we do have more options for IPsec. So let's take a look at those. So the first one is, let's get that up, an active active mesh IPsec tunnel arrangement. So here we've got an office or a branch. Maybe it's a relatively sizable office and branch. It's got two uh, termination points connecting down into our central site. Well, here this can be a CX10,000 or it could be a third party device. So all, the, all we ask of the third party device is to port standards based IPsec and you can insert that in at the, at the remote end. So here I've just got uh, two devices and we ha can have IPsec running across our mesh tunnels. If we're using the CX10000 running uh, BGP over IPsec, this would be a particular model that would be a preferred way of doing it. Um, and we can still apply our firewall policy at a central site for ingress and egress policies. So BGP over IPsec, if we've got CX10000 at the remote sites, um, alternatively, we can still have active active tunnels if the third, uh, third party device is supported or if we've got a CX10000 there and we can have a, a single, uh, we can have two active active tunnels going to our central site using um, VSX uh, 610 switch pair. And we again would look at to have um, BGP over IPsec, or alternatively, we could run active backup static routes uh, across these tunnels. So still giving us our resilience. And the last model is if active active is not supported at the remote site or the vendor that you'll be using and you're not using a CX10,000 CX10, switch at the remote site, then you can use 
an active passive arrangement where you've got one tunnel active and the other tunnel effectively is down and to fail over you'd use VRRP. So this would be typically for legacy devices that didn't support this active active arrangement. Why leverage the CX10,000? Well, these are just some of the very good reasons. So first of all, you've got seamless insertion of the DSS firewall, discover, build a policy and enforce without disrupting existing TCP flows, gain visibility into network traffic supporting proactive identification of threats and issues, and then block unknown threats and known threats and unauthorized access for all east-west traffic flows, that's every flow that you can manage in that way. And also this inbuilt DDoS protection, reducing the attack service of DDoS related attacks, and that's inbuilt embedded natively on every CX10,000 switch. And you can find out more about the HPE Aruba Networking CX10,000 series by following this link. That's all I had for you today. I do thank you for tuning in.